Hey, we're following up on externalities, and today we're going to talk about a specific type of policy to, to correct externalities. So throughout the course of this section or this chapter, whatever, we're going to, we're going to do five, uh, five different types of policies. This is the first. So it's called command and control. So let's start with a little bit of reviewing. If you recall, we have the, the private marginal benefit and marginal cost curve. So the private marginal benefit and marginal cost curve. And there's some envi marginal environmental damage. So there's some monetary value of damages associated with a pollutant or an externality in general that shifts up, that's going to add additional costs, essentially a production, um, and create something called the social marginal cost. And what that's going to imply is that there's going to be a Q market, there's going to be a Q market that's, uh, that's above the, the social optimum, this Q star. So there's gonna be a Q star that we would like to be at and the market's gonna to produce too much. If you recall, there's, there's some area here for which cost, social marginal cost, exceed the marginal benefits. Now, command and control policies, what they do, I'm gonna use C and C for short, command and control policy. They're going to dictate, they dictate the level of output, dictate the level of output, okay, of output. So the assumption is, the assumption is that we know, we know Q star, that's the assumption, and, and we're just going to tell firms, tell firms, that's where they, tell firms, um, that's where they need to produce, that, um, okay, where produce. It's that simple. So there's there's some level out there that's determined the socially optimal amount. Um, and, and that's what firms, actors in these, this economy are going to do. Now, what are, what are some examples? What are some examples? The easiest one... Uh, that uh, that we probably all deal with is a speeding limit, okay? A speeding limit. If you're driving down the road, there's a sign that says exactly how fast you should be going. That's the Q star. That's what uh, society or government, whomever, has decided. That's how fast you should drive on that road, um, and that's the Q star. Driving over is too much. Driving under is 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 maybe uh, not great as well, especially if you're on the interstate or if you're angering people on the on the road. Uh, so speed limits are something that we've dictated the amount that we would like people to uh, to travel. Uh, the other one, and we're going to go a bit into this in a, a separate example, is um, is things that are banned. So I posted a video. On, uh, on plastic in the ocean and, and some of the policies around that. So in many communities, we've banned plastic bags. So there's about 127 countries throughout the world that have either banned or taxed plastic grocery bags. New York and California have banned them altogether. Um, anytime you ban something, it's as if you, society has decided that Q star is equal to zero. Now, graphically, that might be um, a little bit weird, but essentially that social marginal costs are above uh, the, the marginal benefit. So the, the optimal amount is Q equals zero, all right? That's a command and control policy. Um, now, I, I, um, I, I think it might be worthwhile to just sort of open your eyes around what might happen around you to see if there's some level uh, that seems to be dictated of things um, uh, that uh, the, the, the sort of the optimal amount, right? So some, some level that's sort of been dictated uh, through, through policy. So right now we're going through the sort of the, the, the COVID-19 um, issues and, and at the grocery store you see that for some items, so for like home health items, you can only take four or five items depending on your grocery store. So the grocery store is saying that you can only have four of a certain item is is essentially setting that that optimal level of of a good all right so those are examples of command and control policies when are they used what are some advantages of them right so um 
advantages uh, and, and the advantages will tell you, I guess, when they're used. So they're, they're nice when the output kind of has to be at a certain level. So output is relatively certain as long as people follow the rules and, and produce the right amount. Output is certain. So this is really important for some, uh, for some uh, there's often called threshold pollutants, where uh, a little bit too much is a really bad thing, all right? So if you want to get the output certain, um, then command and control policies might be a place to start. Now they only work, and they work well, so they work well when output is observed, okay? When you can observe output observed. Now there's a couple instances when that might be the case. So that might be true when there's a few firms, okay? So if there's only one or two firms in the market, it might be possible for government regulators to go exactly to those firms and say, how much did you produce? And, and tell, right? So if, if there's cheating, then it's, it's, it's more difficult. But if there's only a few firms, it might be possible to observe the output. Um, the other one might be is sort of if things are relatively homogeneous, that means the same um, in, in sort of... Uh, in production, output, um, or things are similar enough that technology uh, that technology allows widespread monitoring allows widespread monitoring. This is true with speeding, right? It's, it's easy for one policeman to, to observe how fast hundreds of cars are going on a given day. The monitoring, unfortunately, for speeding is relatively advanced um, and relatively possible, right? This is why speeding limits work, because, uh, because, because cars sort of all go the same, um, same way. They travel in, in some sort of manner that allows technology to, to monitor it, right? The output speed is relatively homogeneous, right? There's um, uh, maybe not the level of speed, but the way that we speed, the way that we drive, right? The way cars behave, right? So these are these are advantages or times when um, when command and control might be possible. Times when it might not, right? So disadvantages or times disadvantages or times when it would be exceptionally difficult to use a command and control policy. Um, so one is when monitoring is difficult, okay? So it would be really hard for government can, to control, for example, the, the amount of calories that a person eats, right? There's, there's no way for the government to get involved in that aspect of our lives, right? It would be really hard to dictate it. It would be really hard to monitor it. Sometimes that's because there's just too many uh, firms or producers, um, too many firms or producers, right? Or when the good is just too different, too homogeneous, or uh, too heterogeneous, too heterogeneous. Right. For again, the food example, there's there's millions of ways of to to cook and to to process foods to to consume calories. It would be really really hard for uh, for any sort of monitoring to to happen that way. Right. That's that's also true probably of uh, think of a few different pollutants, um, uh, car exhaust. Right. It's uh, cars depending on the way they. Um, they, they've been tuned, the age of the car, maybe the gas that you use, the, the way that you're driving. It's really hard to dictate car exhaust and car emissions because the way that cars behave are, are, um, are, are, are just too different. Um, another big one is actually that it's, it's relatively politically unpopular. Unpopular. 
people in firms don't like the government telling them what to do. Um, and, uh, and, and, and they're not really going to stand for, for, um, for, for that sort of intervention in our economy, partly because of this third one is probably a big one. Um, it takes away market incentives, takes away market incentives. So I'm going to scroll up to this, uh, this, this picture real quick. So if we, if we look at this graph, right, we have Q star. What that does, if the government says that this year the firm will produce Q star, then there's no, there's no reason for the firm to respond to shifting demand, to other types of process, prices, to, to even look for ways to cut costs. It takes away the market incentives um, related to, uh, uh, to production. And, and sort of related to that, it's, it's the same, maybe a, a different side of the coin. Not only does it take away market incentives, but it removes essentially market signals. Right, so the as demand and supply and prices of of other goods is changing, those market signals sort of get washed out by the government regulation, right? So those are the disadvantages of command and control. So it works really well, maybe when there's one firm with with really observable output, or if there's some sort of technology that allows widespread monitoring. If that's not true, then command and control probably isn't going to be a policy option. All right. Uh, with that, we're going to move on to a couple others. If you have any questions related to command and control, feel free to email me any questions. Thank you.